Hello Aquarius, welcome to Soul Good. I'm Amber Marie and this is your March 2023 Tarot Scope. In the description box below you will find all sorts of goodies to explore including a timestamp if you would like to jump to the start of the reading. But I'm going to ask you to hold off on doing that for just a second because I have some intuitive things that I would like to share with you before we jump in. However, I would also like to remind you that this is a collective reading, not a personal reading, so please only take what resonates with you and leave the rest. Right, so as I was getting ready to come into your reading, shuffling the cards, getting into my space in order to be able to read for you, I actually had the words jump ship, so S-H-I-P come in and I got this very scattered energy coming in with it okay so I do feel like for some of you you could be experiencing this very almost like overwhelming feeling and maybe different spaces right for some of you maybe it's work maybe it's a relationship maybe it's a living situation right whatever it is I just got this very kind of scattered feeling and for some of you I feel like you may find yourself wanting to essentially jump ship, right? So for example, if it's a work thing uh, and it's very overwhelming and you just feel scattered and like you can't focus and just very uncomfortable, I feel like you could be considering leaving that position or that job, right? Similarly with a relationship or a living situation or maybe even your... Um, you know, like your friendship circles or your family or anything of the sort, right? I just get this feeling of like, ah, oh, I don't want to deal with this. Like, I just, I don't want, I don't want to deal with it. It's not even, how would I say, it's not even that you, it's like a very detached side of you, Aquarius, which, you know, Aquarians are kind of known for that on the more, uh, well, We'll, we'll call it like the more negative side or maybe the lower density side, right? I feel like that that's typical as is the scatterbrained type of energy. But I feel like, how do, how would you say, I don't feel like this is so much just detachment and, and just being detached um, from a, like a denser place. I feel like it's more of a, a place of like, just being over it. Okay. I just feel like you're, I can't take it anymore. Like it's not healthy for me. I don't like the way I feel that sort of thing. Okay. Another, uh, another thing that I saw is that while I was shuffling for you, I had a card flop out onto the table from the animal spirit deck, which was the swan. And what that indicates to me is I feel like there's a more creative aspect of your life that you could be focusing on that would bring you much more joy. So maybe it's some form of art, music, writing, something like that, right? I feel like there's this desire to experience things that feel much more fluid, if you will. It just, it, I get this feeling of like the, whatever it is that would allow the creative juices to flow within you, as it were, uh, I feel like you could be feeling called to that. Okay. Um, and for others of you with that swan coming out, because it is this kind of, oh, I'm getting some fear coming up as well. Pardon me. I feel like for some of you, because the swan is also this energy of like a mirroring, um, how would you say, I feel like some of you may be seeing yourselves differently than you have in the past. Um, and some of you may be finding yourselves triggered because there are things that need to be dealt with, need to be healed, need to be faced, right? In order for you to feel more at peace, which just intuitively speaking, right? When I see a swan, um, I'm reminded of that. It's just very peaceful to me right? Even the environments that they're in tend to be more peaceful. And so I just feel like there's this desire for more peace and need for more peace. And I feel like this is something that may be calling to you. Okay. And for, I do feel like there's a good chunk of you where one of the focuses of that desire for peace is relationships, 
right? So for example, if it's romantic, if it's familial, if it's platonic, whatever it is, I feel like there's a desire for this peace in your relationships, this more ease or more flow. And so those things could be getting, um, how would you say it, like an evaluation and you could be seeing things reflected back to you to make that more apparent. So for example, if you're in, let's say a tumultuous relationship, a uh, romantic partnership, you may be finding yourselves like bickering more and feeling more uncomfortable around that person or bothered or annoyed or whatever it is. And again, this is just one of many, many examples. Take it as it resonates with you, but definitely energies that I'm picking up on. Let's see what the cards have to say, though. We may get some more as we dive deeper. Let's jump in. Please, Father, Mother, Life, Universe, Spirits, Guides, Angels, our cosmic team, our ancestors, our higher selves, tell us about Aquarius' theme for March 2023, please. What do we need to know about Aquarius' theme? Wow, okay. Yeah, that's... you. Okay, so you... There's five cards here. I'm not going to take them because it's it's a lot. Uh, but again, that scattered type of energy coming through. And oftentimes, the energy that I'm tapping into it can be uh, depicted, if you will, by the cards. So them coming out very quickly tells me that the energy is very open, um, very direct, right? There's, there's not a lot of resistance. Um, a lot of cards flying out tells me that there's more of a scattered a less focused energy, right? So that's kind of what I'm getting here. Okay, yep, it's like take those. Okay, tell us a truth about Aquarius or that Aquarius needs to, yeah, again, look at, it's the same friggin' cards as well. So yeah, I really feel like this scattered energy. Tell us about a truth for Aquarius this month. There we are. Thank you. It's interesting too, because once I talk about it, then the energy starts to flow. It's like we've addressed it and then the energy is allowed to move, right? So very interesting. Tell us about a lie that Aquarius needs to be made aware of this month, please. Yeah. Look at this. This is wild. You guys, it really feels like you're all over the place. One second, I've got to grab these cards. They're on the floor. just get myself all sorted here. Okay. And finally, tell us about a lesson or blessing for Aquarius this month, a lesson or blessing. Yeah. You guys, what is going on with you? What is going on? <laughs> all right. Tell us more, please, about Aquarius's theme for this month. Tell us more about Aquarius' theme for this month. Don't get shy now. <laughs> Don't get shy now. Tell us more about Aquarius' theme. Thank you. Yeah, the energy started to feel a little blocked. I kind of felt like you're like, oh, oh, well, maybe I should just like not, not be so open or receptive or something. I got some resistance there. Tell us more about a truth for Aquarius, please. Thank you. Tell us more about a lie that Aquarius seems to be made aware of. Thank you. And finally, tell us more about a lesson or blessing. Thank you. Oh, quite a few cards. Wow. Yeah, quite a few cards there. Okay, let's take a look at your theme, Aquarius. So the first card you have out here is the golden egg. So this is a spiritual element card or... Um, the element of this card or the embodiment of it is the spirit, right? And so what's really interesting here, I'm getting a couple of things. First of all, I'm noticing, which interest is interesting to me because it's not, I don't know that I actually ever have before. I mean, I have not used these cards in quite a while, um, but I'm noticing the pattern on the egg here and I'm hoping you, you can see that. Um, and noticing how balanced that is, right? It's like a sacred geometry. And I feel like there's something here about that, that needing more balance. I feel like this month is something, or rather 
a focus for you this month, Aquarius, is finding more of that balance, which is made very apparent by how scattered the energy has felt. And picking up on that intuitively and in the way the cards are behaving, um, I definitely feel like that balance is a big thing. I have been reading these cards in their entirety from the guidebook, the interpretation there, for every one of these spiritual cards that have come out because I feel like the relevance is or the importance of the message there is is pretty heavy uh, so I will be doing that but I just I feel like the, the the biggest thing that I'm picking up on here is this this need for balance I'm also getting like this weird feeling in my throat so for some of you I feel like there's some truths that may need to be spoken in order to bring some balance back in. And again, this could be that energy that I was picking up on in the beginning where I said, you may be in situations or relationships where you're just feeling very overwhelmed and over it, right? And maybe the, this is something that you've been keeping to yourself or something that's been building over time. But let's take a look here at the golden egg and get you some more information dive a little bit deeper I believe this is somewhere in the middle where is it here we are okay so it says here the golden egg the message at the center of the heart or the unstruck sound within the golden egg lives a precious sound Deep within that sound resides a message. The sound cannot be heard nor the message discerned until we retreat from the noise of modern day life. The magical essence of the golden egg needs warmth, quiet, and time to unfold. No rushing, pushing, or grasping. Find a place of deep and restful ease, perhaps through yoga or meditation. If you do not yet have a meditation practice, take some time for introspection or contemplation. When the mind begins to settle and the breath is calm, ask the question that weighs heaviest on your heart, staying open to any response you hear. Engaging with the energy of the golden egg is an advanced practice. It requires becoming intimate with our very essence and comfortable with vulnerability. When a feeling of tenderness or gratitude arises from deep within you, know that you are well on your way. Your chest may swell like you are seeing an old friend that's been away for a long, long time. Listen to the message they've been waiting to tell you. The subtle essence of the golden egg is nestled deep within the heart center at the fourth chakra. This chakra called Anahata is the home of the self or soul. By bringing the mind into the center, we discover a portal to the most intimate and luminous space. It is our, or excuse me, it is said our inner guide sits there in deep meditation waiting for us. Anahata translates as the unstruck sound. So what's super fascinating about this to me is the fact that we have this element of needing to speak truth, right? coming through. And I know this isn't in reference to the throat chakra, but it is in regards to this sound that has not yet been struck, if you will. And I'm looking at this a couple of different ways or picking up on this rather in a couple of different ways. One being there's that need for that sound to be expressed or that truth at the heart to be expressed. I'm also picking up on this in the sense of maybe that creative aspect right? Um, for some of you, maybe that release or that creative practice that you enjoy has something to do with sound or music or songwriting or something like that. And that could be something that may be helpful for you this month as you move through these energies. Uh, but I do feel, right, it's interesting because I was saying in the beginning how I felt like there was this kind of um, scattered or overwhelmed or like overstimulated type of energy where it's like, I just, I just, I want to get out of here. I want to jump ship. Right. And that's maybe likely what I was picking up on here before coming into the reading is that that need to have that time to yourself. Right. Um, 
it could simply just be that that feeling of overwhelm or that feeling of overstimulation or scatteredness is because you haven't had the ability to like collect yourself, right? Or, or to bring yourself into balance, right? Like there's too much going on. Um, and so maybe like uh, suggested in the book there, retreating from the noise of the world may be helpful for you. Um, maybe it is that need for that quiet that's got you in this. I just am so like, I just don't want to deal with things. Okay. But I feel like it would be important to get very clear about that. Like I, I would suggest maybe not making any rash decisions until you've had time to step back from the noise, to step back from the overwhelm, to get your bearings as it were, and to determine, right? through contemplation, discernment, and the like, what it is you actually need. And if it does, or rather, if you do need to separate yourself from a certain environment, job, person, etc. You also have the firefly here. Um, so I do want to say I find it interesting that we have the firefly, which is that air energy, which you are air uh, Aquarius. So I do feel like that's pretty interesting. Another aspect of this that, that I'm fascinated by in regards to the energy that I'm picking up on for you is this firefly. It, it can't stay uh, illuminated, right, or lit for long, right? It's, it's short lived. Um, and so this is telling me I, what I'm picking up on is that it's like you can't keep going at this pace where where you're in a state of overwhelm or scatteredness or or, you know, feeling overstimulated or out of balance. Right. Like it's not sustainable is what I'm picking up on. So I do feel like a theme for you this month is, again, retreating to like said here for the golden egg pulling back from the noise of the world, allowing yourself the time to, to replenish yourself, right? To fill your cup as it were, because I just, I just really get this feeling of like, again, I, I keep getting the word, like the words rather, it's not sustainable. And here's the thing I want to lovingly say to you. Okay. Whatever you believe, I call it God. Maybe you would say source, universe, whatever, okay, whatever you call it is, is irrelevant to me. Uh, but I want to lovingly say that if you are in this state where you need to be able to bring yourself back into balance or need to, to replenish yourself, and maybe God has been giving you nudges, um, you know, like wanting you to sleep more or or calling you to go to a certain place by yourself or spend more time by yourself or things like that and you have been avoiding or ignoring it god will create a situation to almost force you to do that right and it's not so much a force but it's like uh for your own good right maybe you are exhausted and sleep for like 15 hours or something, right? Like, and it could be a multitude of things, right? Because God is God, um, but it could show up in many different ways. And so it's this, how would you say, almost a warning, right? To say, listen to yourself and listen to your body and listen to what you need. And if everywhere you go and being around people and, and, you know, experiencing this overwhelm or scatteredness or anxiousness, even maybe you would call it or panicky type of feeling, maybe, you know, th those would be indicators to say, Hey, it, it could be time for you to spend some time on your own to replenish your cup. And, and so I would advise, of course, you're going to do what you will, um, as always, right? It's your story. You decide. But, you know, I would say or suggest considering stepping back on your own so that there isn't a situation created for you to be able to actually do what needs to be done to get the rest that you need to get the time alone or, you know, something similar. So that's really 
that's really interesting. Sorry, guys, if I didn't show that to you, I apologize. Um, here's the other thing. I also feel the need to tell you, um, if you've been going through any sort of healing of your own traumas, woundings, uh, dealing with your own programming, these sorts of things, trying to clean your, clean up your energy as it were. Um, I really feel like there's a need to, to express to you to take it slow. They, you don't have to rush. There's no need for you to try to hurry things along. Um, because I feel like maybe some of you are like this unsustainability is coming from like trying to push and keep going and keep healing and keep pushing and keep going. Um, almost to keep the darkness at bay is how I'm seeing this. Right. And I feel like, um, ooh, I'm getting all sorts of weird things happening, manifesting in my body right now. <coughs> so the need to cough being one of them. Um, and then I'm getting this head pressure on the left side of, of my face right now or, or my temple. And I feel like there's a couple of things coming in with that one, the coughing energy comes through or that like tickle in the throat comes through when there's a need for, for truth to come out, um, wanting to clear the air. Okay. Um, and for some of you, I feel like maybe you're like kind of avoiding that and just pushing through as it were, but you know, I, I want to lovingly say like, you can sweep truth under the rug all you want, but the lump will still be there, right? It's, it's still going to keep coming up. So no matter how much you try to push through it, push around it, push past it, it will continuously show up until you address it. Um, and then the other aspect that I'm getting of this with the pressure on the left. So now it's, it's actually going back and forth between the right and left now. Um, but it started on the left side, which is that more masculine energy. Um, and so this could be that avoidant energy because the shadow masculine, it does have that avoidant type of energy, um, the need to want to control things. Um, it can be also very critical, right? As well as a bit unstable. Um, and then with the right side, it's that feminine energy and the shadow feminine can be one of like withholding, um, powerlessness, you know, that feeling of powerlessness, um, maybe even a bit weak, if you will, right? Like, like not being able to stand fully in themselves. Um, and I, and I feel like that's part of what's coming through here, like keeping the darkness at bay, right? I just feel like there's, I'm just going to keep going, um, and, and not maybe address the things that I know I should be. Um, but I want to lovingly say again, that's not sustainable, right? Because here's the thing. It's like, I'm trying to put this in a, in a tactful way. Um, I, I feel like there's, it's like, you've got to face your shit. <laughs> okay. Because no matter how fast you run or how much you try to avoid it or want to avoid it, um, it will, it will find its way to you, right? It will make its presence known in some way, shape or form. Yeah, you do have your Oh, and my hand is getting itchy, which is weird to me. That's not something that happens to me very often. So that's strange. Um, oh, oh, I just got the message. Like, like, why is my hand itching? Right. And it's like, it's in like, it's in your hands. Okay. However, things move forward. It's in your hands at this point. And I feel like that's the message, especially with this card that's just shown up for you, which is portal doors are opening, you decide rewards and wild card. Right. So I do feel like it's fascinating to me that my hand was getting itchy and I got the message of like, it's in your hands, right? You decide. I mean, you're, you know, it's your choice as always. And I'm getting fear. I really do feel, pardon me, that some of you are really in this space of wanting to avoid the, the bigger things, the bigger issues, the deeper wounds or, or the deeper traumas, um, the deeper programming, the things that you have not addressed, right? 
the things that you would prefer to keep swept under the rug or tucked in the closet. And I really do feel it's, it is your choice. It is. Um, not a lot of people can handle getting quiet with themselves. Okay. Um, and I want to lovingly say to you, Aquarius, quiet does not mean at home with the TV on in your bedroom. Okay. That's not what that means. Um, or, you know, by yourself with earbuds. No, 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 sweets. I'm talking silence, silence, right? Whether that's in nature or in, you know, the, the comfort of maybe your home or bedroom or whatever it is, but it is silence. It is allowing yourself to be in that space. And, you know, it is very uncomfortable, but not facing it is far more uncomfortable because it's going to be that constant thorn in your foot as you continue to walk through life. So again, it is your decision, but I do feel like it would be helpful for you to get quiet because I feel like doing so and addressing some of these things could open doors that maybe previously you weren't even aware of. So a truth for you, OMG. Yeah. So here's the thing, <laughs> Aquarius, a truth is like the hummingbird is very similar to the firefly. It's an air um, element as well. But similarly, look at, look at even, even the way that they're, they're laid out is similar, right? There's this space of illumination, if you will, around the firefly. Similarly, it's light here around the hummingbird, but then there's this darkness that's kind of being kept at bay. Um, and with the hummingbird, it's a very similar energy like the firefly. The hummingbird requires a lot of sustenance, right? It, it burns through energy very, very quickly. And so again, this is essentially God saying, I said what I fucking said. You need to be addressing the things because the rate that you're going is unsustainable. And I think you know this to be true right? Because this is a truth for you. Like, I feel like in many cases, um, throughout this month's tarot scopes for whatever signs, those truths are, are the things often that you already know. I mean, much of what it comes out in any reading is something that you already know on some level or another, whether that be conscious or subconscious. Um, but with this, I feel like this is something, you know, I think you, I think you have maybe been feeling burnt out or, or again, just like almost irritated. Right. And I think it's because you're like trying to keep giving, but you don't have nothing to give. Right. There's, there's like, your cup is not full. You don't, you're not happy. You're not, you're not balanced. You're, you're not in a state of harmony. Right. But you're still trying to give um, maybe to other people or to a job that you don't like or whatever it is. And it's just creating more tension, more overwhelm. Let's see. What else do we have? Yeah. Yeah. We have the Panther. So here's the thing, like the truth of it is, look at this. It's a similar energy with all that darkness. And the Panther is about annihilation. Okay. So this element showing up, or this animal showing up for you in this position after everything that we've already talked about, I feel like the truth of it is, is like, you know, there are things that just need to be annihilated within your experience that are not serving you. That's not good for you. That is draining you. That is just really, again, really not good for you, right? I feel like you, the truth of it is there are things that need to be released, need to be let go of. I'm actually going to check the book right here just to see what the keywords are. I remind myself of what they are. Again, I have not used these cards in quite a while. Yes. So, uh, yes. Annihilation of the unnecessary or purging, right? So essentially, um, this space that, that, that you've been sitting in Aquarius is one of it's, it's wild because I feel like you keep trying to push forward but you're not filling your cup back up. And in so doing, you're just stagnating, right? Like you're not getting anywhere. It's like running in circles. Um, and so again, there are things that just need to be released. And I feel like getting quiet with yourself and allowing yourself 
the opportunity to hear yourself and process what needs to be processed in order to release or let me back up a little bit. I feel like there's like a processing that needs to happen in order for you to be aware of what it is that really is just not serving you. What's your clarifier here? The courageous peony. Yeah. Multifaceted, unique nature. Let yourself be seen. Now, what's really standing out to me here is this courageous bit, right? Because I do feel like there's a fear here. I don't know what that is. Um, I mean, I'll be, I'll be, I feel like there's almost a, a codependent energy, um, for some or, or, a, or a fear, whatever it is that maybe needs to be let go of. Right. And it could be codependent, um, though it doesn't have to be, but I feel that may be why some of you are struggling to let go of some of the things you are, right? Especially if these are, are deep relationships or, or long time friendships or relationships or jobs or, or living situations or whatever it is. I feel like there's a fear of releasing said thing, um, or, you know, annihilating it out of your life as, as you, as you might say. Um, and the truth here is like, I feel the truth is that that element element of courage is needed, but also I feel like you've likely changed, right? Especially if this is a long, a long standing thing, um, or, or a long term thing that's been in your life, you have likely changed, right? And so things that, that were helpful to you say, you know, three, four, five, even six, like, I, I mean, years ago, or even, you know, six months ago, three months ago, may not be now. Because we are ever changing. I mean, that is the life we go through cycles of death and rebirth. It's just what life is. Um, and so I feel like there's this need here to, to step into this space of courage, and to allow yourself to release the things that just simply are not aligned with you anymore. But I feel again that there is some, I don't even know, maybe somebody you feel like would, maybe you have a fear of hurting someone, um, or maybe again, there's like, maybe for some, there could be like a codependent type of energy there where you have a fear of releasing, right. Of, of letting something go, um, for fear of being alone or rejection or abandonment or something like that. But I feel what's being asked of you here is to be truthful and realize like the road that you're on or, or the, the path, the trajectory you're on is not sustainable. And there's a big need to release the things that are not serving you to step into that space of courage. And I mean, really, here's the thing you cannot address your multifaceted unique nature and what it is you need to even allow yourself to be seen and heard if you yourself are don't know fully what it is that you need or who you are and so i feel like that is why the theme for you this month aquarius is really to get get some time to yourself so that you can make a decision confidently I heard actually. So let's take a look at a lie. We have the lion. I mean, and here's the thing. I kind of thought we probably would see it come out because it did come out so many times when, um, when we were shuffling for you, I feel like this lion showing up the lie is I feel like you're over here acting like you've got it all fucking figured out that you can just like put on a brave face and just go through it because it's what's worked for you in the past. Well, sweets, I want to lovingly say we are in a different space and I'm not just talking about, um, I mean, this, this is, it's interestingly enough, it's incredibly multifaceted. Um, but we are in an incredibly different space, um, planetarily, cosmically, energetically, um, as, as individuals and as a collective, uh, the planet is in a different space. And so the things that once worked will not work anymore. And you can 
you know, do your own research. I would encourage you to anyways. Um, but, you know, look at some of the more well-respected, well-known astrologers. Um, and you will discover that this is where we are heading. Um, some of my favorites are, say, the Leo King, Sloth Soul Astrology, Molly McCord, um, are just, just a handful of my favorites. And so you, I mean, obvious, again, feel free to do your own research, but things are just not the same. They're just not. And so the things that once worked are no longer going to work and just pushing through is not going to be helpful. So I feel like part of the lie here is maybe you feel like you're being brave, but in I'm saying this with so much love, I want you to know that because I can feel, I can almost feel the like, um, I don't, I, I don't feel like you're taking it like an insult, but I feel like you're taking it hard. Um, like I can, I feel it. <laughs> uh, it's like, oh, that hurts right? Like that's how I'm feeling this coming through as I'm speaking about it to you. But sweets, I mean, I'm just the messenger, right? And, and I'm saying this with so much love and these things in these readings have been a consistent theme of showing us what maybe we don't want to hear for our own benefit, for us to be able to grow and move past the things that really are truly weighing us down, that are limiting us from the inside out, okay? And I feel like the lie that's been told here, and I feel like it's a lie you've been telling yourself, is that you can just keep going in the manner by which you have been, and that it will be fine, that you're, you're king shit, and you're gonna, it's fine. And I, it's just simply not the truth, okay? Oh, some of you just probably are not going to like me after this. That's okay, though. We have the dolphin here. Yeah, I feel like some of you have said, like, you're healing. And that could, I, it's interesting, this card, because I do feel like some of you actually are healing. Um, I do feel like some of you actually are and have been working very hard um, to heal some, some things. But I feel that, how would you say... I feel like some of you know that there are other things you could be doing or maybe you've stagnated a bit in your healing, right? And again, I don't want to discredit you, Aquarius, because I feel like there are those of you that have been doing the work and have been working on your healing. And I do feel like you have made progress for those that resonate with that. But I do feel like you may have found yourself kind of stagnating a little bit, right? Maybe you're you're like, okay, I've done some things and I've made this progress. And maybe you're like, now what do I do? Now where do I go? Right. And I feel like getting quiet with yourself will allow that to drop into your space. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. So I'm getting as well. I feel like some of you may maybe addressing the more how would you say obvious things that need healing for, for example? Um, and it could have started with, I want to lovingly say like pointing the finger and seeing, okay, you know, I'll just use my own situation because it, instead of telling you what yours is, because I don't know. Um, but in my own situation, for example, like I started off healing where I was like, okay, this person did this to me and they were constantly doing that. And this person was constantly doing this and this person made me feel this way. And that kind of started my healing. Um, but as I've grown, I've really understood that there is no pointing the finger because it always comes back to me. And so I feel like with this, this energy here, I feel like you could have been you could have started your healing from that space and you likely have been working on your healing, but I feel like you could go deeper with it. Does that make sense? What else do we have? The empathic starseed energetic sovereignty absorbing what's not yours. Yeah. So it's really interesting because I feel like I, I referenced um, at the top of the reading, the swan card and how it mirrors energy, right? It had that mirror. And it's interesting because this empathic starseed has a mirror there. 
Um, I do feel like there could be something here about that, that uh, relationship or job or whatever it is that could be impacting you and in a negative way. Um, I do feel like, you know, whatever that relationship or space is for you, there is definitely likely a need to remove yourself or free yourself from that, right? And with, yeah, oh, oh, interesting too, is I'm getting, uh, coming back is, is that I was speaking on maybe you've been kind of started your healing by pointing the finger, right? And remember, I was speaking about my own situation and how it always comes back to myself. And if you look here, right, there's that mirror. Um, so I feel like I'm picking up on this in a couple of ways. One, to be addressing your own healing um, by, you know, no longer pointing the finger, but realizing what is truly yours. And then also to bring it even a step further for some of you, I feel like you are or likely have been absorbing things that aren't yours in various environments, whether that be a, ro a romantic relationship, a familiar relationship, platonic relationship within your community, within your job, whatever it is, right? You're, you are likely um, in a space where it's not conducive to you. It's not in alignment with you. And so you just kind of go there and sit in this misery or this energy that isn't serving you and absorb that and take it with you. Right? Wow. Okay. So let's take a look now for you at the lesson or blessings. So we do have here the dragon and this is about getting back to your soul. I almost took a dive there. Hoo -hoo. That's interesting. Um, this is about getting back to your soul self, to your true self underneath all of the shit, <laughs> underneath the wounding, the trauma, the programming, the fear. Pardon me. I feel like some of you are afraid to see what this is. Um, and what I mean by that is I feel like some of you are afraid to, to see yourself. Um, I feel like some of you have been buried under your own trauma, wounding, programming, etc. for so long that maybe you don't even know who you are underneath all of that anymore. And I feel like for some of you, there could be a fear of actually seeing that or, or getting to that space because it's like, I don't even know what I'm going to do from there, right? Like, who am I going to be? Am I even going to like myself? Ooh, I, why am I having all of these weird, uh, feelings in my hands. I don't know if some of you are dealing with weird, like, like pains in your hands, um, or something maybe, or maybe you work with your hands or something, but like, I keep getting all these weird, I mean, it, yeah, I just heard it's in your hands. It is in your hands. Um, okay. I actually just got the words too. You, like you cause your own suffering right? Like it's in your hands. Your suffering is in your own hands. Take it if it resonates, leave it if it doesn't. Um, but again, with the dragon here, the lesson or blessing, I feel like the lesson here is for you to get back to yourself, to figure out what is really actually you. Okay. We are going to be reading this card again, because it is the element of the spirit. And like I've shared, we've been reading, um, or I've been reading these for all the signs that get them regardless of how many Okay, so just let me find that for you. There we are. Okay, so yeah, so it says here, dragon seeing one's most true self balancing the ego. Okay. So as I read through this, consider this from a, a space of a lesson or blessing, and it could be both. Okay. Could be both a lesson and a blessing for you as lessons often are. The dragon sees everything. Its essence has been with us since before our first breath and will be there at our last. It watches us navigate the external world as well as our inner world. When dragon energy is awakened, we are courageous, visionary, and can easily drop in to witness consciousness. 
It's almost as if we are traveling with a great friend inside of ourselves. When we look in the mirror, there's that word again, deep into our eyes, we may even glimpse the self behind the self, the one who is watching us. This is the power of the dragon breathing transformative fire into every cell of our bodies. Witnessing this omnipotent energy, even for a brief moment, helps us surrender and let go. We let the dragon guide us. We hop on its back for a ride. And as we traverse even the most difficult terrain, the dragon's eyes see beauty everywhere. It is said that if a yogi does not see beauty in the world, their agni is dim. Agni is described as inner fire or sacred intelligence. May even just the mention of the dragon stir the embers of intelligence within you. It goes on to say, the subtle energy of the dragon lives at the navel center. In the, I'm probably mispronouncing these, um, in the Manipura Chakra. Manipura translates to the city of hidden gems. And behind its gates burns the fire of our transformation and digestion. The sages believe health of the fire at the navel center is what governs our ability to clearly see both the inner and outer dimensions. So again, right, it is this energy showing up. And I do feel like it's a lesson, again, about discovering that inner self underneath all of the things. What is true for you and why it is true for you? right? Um, I also feel like this will allow or is providing the blessing of transformation through the discovery of that self, right? And I, I have to just repeat this so lovingly. Once you start to transform, once you start to discover this, the, your true self, your soul self, right? Underneath all of the things, more often than not, a lot changes within your experience. Um, the people you talk to, the environments you're in, your job, the music you listen to, the food you eat, the way you carry yourself, your thoughts, the all everything starts to change, right? And with that comes the loss of a lot of things, okay? So I just feel like I needed to share that and, and kind of prepare you, I guess, in a way to say like, it's normal, um, to be experiencing those sorts of losses. Okay. It's normal to kind of have your life unfold in, in un unexpected ways or to have certain areas of your experience collapse, um, because it's just no longer serving you. You're raising your vibration, you're healing, you're discovering the truth. And as you align with that more and more, the things that are not your truth, right, um, will make their way out of your life in some way, shape, or form. Well, isn't that fascinating? So here's the thing. Um, I feel like I need to share with you, Aquarius, you are likely going or have the opportunity, right, because it is in your hands, to experience an incredible transformation. But it is your choice. Okay, um, so let me just get the book here with the black egg. I feel like this is, there's there's a lesson here. I don't know what it is because it's the darkness for me in your reading that keeps creeping up, that keeps showing up in some way, shape, or form. And so I do feel like part of the lesson here for you is facing that darkness, whatever that looks like for you. I do feel like it's going to be very beneficial. Um, for some of you, interesting, before I jump into here, I feel like some of you may have been dealing with like sore throat issues. And I want to say, I'm going to say, I'm just a girl on YouTube. I am not a doctor. I do not and will not give medical advice. Uh, but, but I feel like some of you may have been dealing with like sore throat issues. And if this is true for you and you've resonated with what's coming in this reading, I want to lovingly say that there could be something there about speaking your truth. Because oftentimes when we're holding on to energies, they manifest in our physical bodies as illness or dis-ease. Okay? Take it if it resonates with you. Leave it if it doesn't. Where is that black egg? 
There we are. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. You're yep. You guys, I have not read these cards in a while and I don't know. I can't remember if there are any other signs that have gotten this card uh, prior to you, Aquarius. I'm not sure, but I know, I know I haven't seen it a lot. If, if I did, because I can't recall. Um, and wait till, wait until you hear what it says. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, um, I don't, I don't remember reading this. Um, and yet somehow it still manifested in my body before I even flipped the card over or, or rather before I opened the book, I should say. Um, so it says here, speaking from an authentic voice, the truth, you cannot make this shit up. You really can't. The black egg contains one of life's essential treasures, the truth. Inside of it resides no confusion, excuses, small talk, noise, or lies. Not even white ones. This living and breathing vessel harbors only that which rings true. When this essence is in balance, we speak slowly and clearly. We are drawn to activities like writing, reading, teaching, singing, or perhaps public speaking sounds draws or excuse me sounds draw us in books draw us in the concept of truth itself draws us in we start asking questions like what do i know to be true about myself and what is true about the world when the energy of the black egg is not yet accessed we speak from an unsure place we say things others want to hear, gossip, or repeat stories to justify our subpar behavior. We might even try to convince ourselves that we have no inner truth at all. The energy of the black egg hovers and waits for us to reconnect. It is available at every moment in every situation. It's the epicenter of truth, the birthplace of our voice. The subtle essence of this card resides at the base of the throat, at the Vashuddha Chakra. The ancient sages saw this center as the hub that governs our speech and expression. Vashuddha translates as especially pure. The balance of this center is important for all of us, but is especially essential for writers, editors, music <laughs> musicians, excuse me, and teachers. So again, right, that truth, getting to the truth of who you are, what is true within, right? When I'm feeling a bit lightheaded, I don't know. I feel like some of you guys are like, I don't like this. <laughs> um, I feel like some of you are like, oh, wow, damn. Like, how do I say, uh, I feel like for some of you, it's like throwing you for a loop. Cause I feel like, like that feeling that you get when you go on a roller coaster and it like spins you around and you're like, Whoa, uh, that's what I'm feeling. Let's see that to clarify though, you got the love. Oh, isn't that interesting? Hadarian energy, codependency and boundaries. Oh wow. And my throat, you hear my throat. I don't know if you could hear that. Um, but it started to get scratchy. I feel like this, you got the love card showing up with boundaries or excuse. Yeah. Okay. Boundaries too, apparently. Um, but with codependency and maybe these are boundaries that you need, like for you, not boundaries. How would you say? Um, I don't necessarily know if it's boundaries that need to be put up around you for, for, because there are other people, although it's possible as well, because you do have this um, absorbing what's not yours, but more than anything, I, I feel like there could be boundaries needed here for like, it's like, how do you, how would you say I'm stepping away from this situation because I need to, because I'm like me being here is not healthy for me, right? It's not anything to do with you and, and, and anything you're doing, but it is, I need to do this for me because I feel like there are some of you who may have codependent tendencies. Okay. Where it's like, um, for some of you, I feel like it's giving too much, right? Like, like you just dump all of your stuff. You just keep dumping and dumping and dumping and dumping and never refilling your own cup. Um, and so you stepping back for you gives you the opportunity to replenish yourself 
to do things for self, um, to focus on yourself. And then for others of you, I feel like the, the, the codependency comes from like not wanting to be alone and it's necessary for you to step back in order to get alone with yourself in order to hear for yourself. Right. And I don't, again, I don't feel like this for everyone at the very, at least I don't feel that this is about, um, how others may be treating you. Right. It, it's, I feel like it's like facing the fact that you it's in your hands and you are you know how do you say um you create your own suffering right and so it's like no i need to pull myself back away from this give back to myself focus on myself so i can figure out what i need right it's really interesting so again yeah i feel like it's for some of you this is about discovering love for yourself and i'm not talking about the whole like savage, I don't need nobody kind of fake love because that's a mask. I'm talking about like unconditionally and genuinely loving your authentic self. No lies, no truths. I'm talking loving the good, bad, ugly, all the mistakes, all the bullshit, loving you for you, right? Like really loving you because when you get to that point, you don't need anybody else, not a spouse, not a parent, not a, not a, not a nothing. You don't need anybody, a boss to tell you that you're valuable or to make you feel valuable or loved or important or like you matter, right? You don't need any of that. You just are right. What else do we have here for you? All paths lead home, inner authority. Yeah. Intuition, turn your gaze within all of, all of your reading here. Aquarius has been about getting back to yourself, diving within, right? Not hiding from like not sweeping stuff under the rug, not nothing, but really coming home to yourself, your soul self. And I feel like this is just reiterated. And I feel like this is the lesson for you, right? Is, is to really figure out who you are and it's a blessing as well like it's going to be a lesson because it's going to be hard to look at self um but it's a blessing because it's going to allow you the opportunity to really is not only establish but maintain your that like i don't know how do i word this i feel like it's going to show you to you right? It's going to show you your value without having to like prove anything to anyone. Okay. Like without anything external to validate it. Okay. So I'm not saying that you don't already matter or that you don't already have value. I just feel like the lesson and blessing here for you is showing it to you without any need to reach a certain status or to have a certain person or a certain paying job or a certain address or car or clothes or whatever in the hell it is. Right. It's like, I just love me for me because I love me because I know me. I, right. That's, that's how I'm seeing this. What else do we have here for you? Child of the cosmos, the intelligence of the universe lies within you. Uh, I feel like, yeah, I feel like, you know, right. I feel like this is also learning, like there's more to you than what you know. Um, I feel like you may have been hiding that truth from yourself, right. With that black egg, um, closing your eyes as it were with the dragon here and really not acknowledging if even allowing yourself to be made aware of the fact that you do have as it says, the intelligence of the universe within you. I do want to read this book or the, the interpretation from the guidebook here for this card for you, because I feel like, um, it could be helpful when we look at your lesson and blessings here for the month. So it does say here, um, there's a mysterious force that governs all of life and intelligence that tells flowers when to bloom and the tides and seasons when to come and go. That intelligence is within you too. 
it was there before you drew your first breath and it will be there well beyond your last. It's the part of you that informed every cell what to do when you were in your mother's womb. It's harder to resist this force than it is to surrender to it because earth is a planet of polarity and free will. It's easy to forget that this intelligence exists within us. So often we become disconnected from this pulse of life and fall into the pattern of believing that we're separate or feeling that we need to go it alone. We can feel isolated and as if we need to figure things out for ourselves to rely on our own strength. You, or excuse me, you are being called to remember the intelligence that's within each and every one of your cells to remember you're a precious child of a loving, gentle universe, that you have access to all of the intelligence, wisdom, strength, flow, and qualities there ever were, are, or will be. And to remember that if flowers know exactly when and how to bloom, then you do too. How can you surrender more deeply to the intelligent flow of life? So yeah, there's been, you know, kind of this, like I was saying, sweeping it under the rug, this kind of resistance to what you know to be true within yourself. And what's really interesting is I just looked up and we were at an hour, one minute and 10 seconds. So that would be if we remove the zeros because they have no value. Um, one, one, one. That's new beginnings, opportunity, potential. Right. So you have an opportunity here to, to really experience life from a different space. Right. But it is going to take you acknowledging the truth of who you are. Finally, you have your earthed learning how to be human in the world, but not of it. So interestingly, she looks like she's in an egg. <laughs> OK, funny enough. Um, but what I find really fascinating about this energy showing up for you here, Aquarius, is that this earthed energy is one of, sure, there are a lot of things that can happen in our experience around us, to us, if you will. I'm getting fear, a lot of things that can create fear. But, right, all of these things happen for us, right? They, they happen to allow us a certain experience so that we can learn from it, grow from it. Right. And so there's a need here to recognize or acknowledge instead of getting caught up in the things that have happened in your experience and saying, you know, essentially being the victim, this has happened to me. Um, this has happened to me. This has happened to me. So, and so did that to me or did this to me, right? It's like, what did I learn from those experiences? What did I gain from those experiences? How can I use what those experiences have shown me to move forward? What has it allowed me to learn about myself and other people? Right? So, um, for example, some of the things I've experienced in my own life and have been incredibly traumatic um, and painful. And the way that I've alchemized or transmuted those situations is, you know, so for some of them, it's been like, okay, well, that's shown me what I definitely don't want to be. And sometimes we have to go through the things we don't want to experience and, and be who we don't want to be in order to learn who we do want to be and what we do want to experience, right? So I feel like gaining or allowing yourself to acknowledge that um, or perhaps looking at things from a different perspective in that space uh, may be helpful for you to really realize and accept, if you will, how much of a blessing life truly is. But of course, that is up to you as always. Wow, Aquarius, what a big month for you. I feel like there's an incredible opportunity here, right? Lots of spiritual cards. So for me, it's the equivalent of the major arcana in the tarot, which would indicate to me the potential for massive self-transformation. And of course, as it says, the choice is yours. 
what are you going to do with it? Are you going to remain the same? Are you going to have the same experience, um, you know, day after day? Or are you going to decide to take the time to put the work in, to get quiet, and to hear who you truly are from your soul? The choice is yours. Thank you so much for joining me, Aquarius, for this tarot scope. I truly do appreciate your time, your attention, your company, and your energy. If something in this reading has been helpful or resonated for you in some way, shape, or form, please do the YouTube things by liking, sharing, commenting below, or smashing that subscribe button. It really does help the channel to grow, and I truly, truly do appreciate it so very much. I pray that your month is full of revelations, courage, faith, and a discovery of your truth. Take care of your beautiful soul. Peace be with you, and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.